Welcome to the Luxury Travel Marketer Podcast, Episode 9, Content. This is uh, part three in our series on marketing funnels, which is our uh, speciality at JMOB Marketing. And as such, it's important that we talk today about content, right? So content marketing, what's the general definition that most people know? So for most people, content marketing means blogging in combination with search engine optimization, right? This kind of approach has been made popular by companies like Marketo or HubSpot in particular. Um, and you know, lots of people nowadays still treat content marketing synonymous with inbound and synonymous with blogging and SEO. But content marketing is actually much more. Uh, and if you look at it and listen to this podcast episode, you will find out why. Um, so content marketing in general, you know, there's the saying, uh, content is king, context is queen. So it is really important in the modern time to create uh, material, marketing materials uh, for your potential customers that resonate with you know, what they're looking for. If they want information, you have to provide them with information. If they want stories, you have to provide them with stories. If they pro want proof of uh, your performance or of your experience, you need to provide them with that. And there is no way around it. It doesn't matter if you're a mass market product, if you're premium or if you're luxury. In luxury, there's a particular uh, aspect to content marketing though, which uh, describes pretty much the luxury dream, which we talked about in earlier episodes. Uh, there's a lot of books you can read about that aspect of luxury brand marketing in particular. But you know, for something to be accepted as luxury, your content has to fit certain criteria. And those criteria can range from a vi certain visual aesthetic, depending on uh, what kind of luxury service or product uh, you are trying to sell in online, uh, ranging to, you know, the type of wording that you use in your copywriting, ranging to, you know, like to the musical choices you have, if it's a video or any kind of other audio file uh, that, you can, that you're playing on your website. And yeah, and just, you know, like the, the, the finesse and the, is it minimalistic? Is it lavish? You know, those are all questions uh, in terms of art style, uh, art direction, which are very important for luxury uh, marketing content, right? So that being out of the way, um, what is like, what types of content are we actually talking about if we're talking about content marketing online, right? So we're usually talking about different formats, but the formats are sometimes repetitive in the sense that they apply to different types of verticals and business models. So we can start with just simple web content, right? The kind of copy and content you write on your homepage, like the information that you provide about yourself, your services, your history, your values, your brand identity, uh, your heritage, uh, if you're like an established company, which can be very helpful in luxury, particularly, um, then it goes to obviously blogging, which, you know, in its simplest form is like just a simple news update every week or so. Or if, if you don't have much going on in your company, which I personally don't believe, uh, any, every company has interesting stuff going on is like maybe like every two weeks or once a month, it can, uh, extend obviously to things like uh, content writing, where you write, you create what is called a lead magnet in marketing, which is maybe a sales prospectus, a uh, PDF um, that features the yachts that you have as a charter company available, or the, the jets that you have, or, you know, like uh, some form of storytelling in form of downloadable, viewable content, you know, maybe like a testimonial or case study about a high net worth family office that you created a great travel package for and would like always travel with you again or work with you again and providing that to your online visitors in form of like a download or something that like that is viewable on your readable on your website right that is also a form of content writing then obviously we are talking about you know just uh, product descriptions which uh, apply in particularly to, you know, like uh, yachts, jets, and uh, hotel rooms and suites. Um, most people have very bad product and service descriptions, in my experience, and uh, they go with like, oh, okay, if we list out the technical features, the yacht is that long, it has that many people, it goes that fast, and it's 
that old or has been recently refurbished, um, then it will be fine. The hotel, the luxury hotel room has the standard, you know, five star. It has an ironing board. It has a great uh, flat screen TV. It has a concierge service. It has a great view, comfortable beds, etc., etc. Right? If you just list out features, yes, that might be interesting for very technical buyers, which will you will rarely find in B2C luxury travel, right? People uh, buy based on emotional appeal, aesthetics, and you know, the types of benefits that the service or product will provide to them. So in other words, your product descriptions and your copywriting, right, on your service pages, product pages, has to kind of like focus on the benefits that you provide to the customer, right, to your guest. Um, it, it has to be more like in a sense, Let's take an example. Um, you would say like, oh, we have uh, a comfortable bed from that and that brand. We would be much better would be to describe like you can sleep, uh, you can rest your head after like uh, traveling for the beautiful city wherever the hotel is located on our satin sheets with, uh, you know, from blah, 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 the brand who is very established and uh, have mattresses that are the most comfortable because of their new technology, blah, blah, blah. And so you mean like you make it more rich, you make it more uh, appealing, you, you turn like a, a simple basic description of like a, a comfortable like queen size bed into something that is more of like uh, something to be discovered, right? Uh, it has uh, some uh, richness that you can dive uh, into. And that kind of like feeling, uh, storytelling feeling and, uh, and the world you know, of the luxury brand opening up for your customer. That is the kind of like feeling that you need to uh, provoke with your copyright. And very few brands uh, do that well. Um, you can, uh, if you want to see people doing it well, you can look obviously to the established luxury fashion brands, what they write on their websites, how they talk about their heritage, how they talk about their products, you know, like the way they describe the experience of going into a store and, you know, picking a handbag or something like that. That is usually, they're usually very good with that stuff. So uh, luxury travel, in my opinion, can learn a lot from those kind of like big established groups because they know what they're doing with their content. Um, so yeah, we talked about uh, web content, we talked about blogging, we talked about uh, product and service descriptions, copywriting, so sales copyright. Then a special form of that would be sales letters, which is like, is particularly like in direct marketing, which is the type of marketing we do at Jade Wolf with our funnels. You know, where you have a dedicated landing page and the copy, the content on there is built, written to provoke a certain desire, to amplify it, to take the reader into your world, to, you know, appeal to his emotions, appeal to his, like, rationality as well to a certain degree. And, you know, to, uh, like, encompass him in your world so he's, like, taken away and, you know, he can imagine himself ex exploring and uh, experiencing this great luxury service or product, right? So this is uh, the kind of uh, thing you should go for with when you write a sales letter or some dedicated landing page copy. And so this is pretty much the most uh, basic forms of written content. Then we can go obviously to like more visual forms of content, uh, which are obviously pictures, uh, photography, editorials. Um, this is a no brainer. I think in luxury travel that you need beautiful pictures to sell luxury products that this, everybody knows this, this is a known fact from the brand marketing side of things. And I don't really need to elaborate, you know, the finesse and the intricacies of, uh, editorial photography and artistic shoots and model booking and location, uh, scouting and, you know, organizing that stuff. Uh, that is an art form in itself. We at Jade Wolf are providing that as well. Um, we have partners we work with that are good at those things. And, you know, like, uh, but lots of times when we approach businesses, they already have their own content, they're photographers, because they had to, right? If they wanted to establish themselves in the market, they had to make a photography in the past. But, you know, one thing I should maybe mention about the whole editorial photography side of things is that things can get stale. And sometimes people have images which are like from three, four years previously and uh, you know customers realize that if there is no new artistic influence new no innovation in the marketing uh, and in the, in the visual aspect of it and the branding then uh, it can also communicate certain things that okay this is a company that doesn't really invest in their marketing so if they don't invest in their marketing there is a high chance that they don't invest in their customer service 
that they don't invest in their actual property, in the fulfillment of the service, in their uh, upkeep or maintenance. So uh, it can communicate a lot of bad things if, if, your, if your visual content starts becoming stale, right? So a lot of companies every couple of years will like, you know, hire a web design agency to like redo their website and make new pictures and things like that to go with the times. This is a good practice, but uh, it cannot be the end of it because if you just redo your website, you know, obviously you're not really building a funnel. You're not really taking care of like all the additional aspects of digital marketing that you need to have a functioning digital strategy, right? I guess that makes sense. So um, if, you go, if you go beyond written content and obviously uh, photography, then we enter the realm of rich media. So rich media, what does rich media means? Rich media is pretty much what we nowadays uh, in our digital world love to consume the most. It, uh, you are listening to a form of rich media. You're listening to a podcast right now. So you are um, actually, you know, experiencing our content marketing or B2B content marketing at Jaguar. I hope you like it. Um, but rich media can be more than just audio like podcasts. It can be, uh, it could be, for example, something creative like an interview with uh, the executives in a hotel with a chef, you know, with a bar chef. There's people, you know, that would love to listen to something like that to get a little bit more in depth about your hotel. Because for some people, yes, it's just a couple of clicks. I want to book something. I want to get something. I want to have it out of the way. But some people really care about their travel and they want to have a great, unique experience and they want to see the human touch, you know, that is important in luxury. The, what, what in luxury fashion and retail and leather jewelry would be the, the handcrafted element. That's the human touch. That's the human, you know, um, aspect of people caring about your travel, caring about your service, being there for you. That's, that's what it is in travel. So people sometimes, you know, don't don't realize how important this aspect really is uh, because people want to deal with people and people want to deal with people in travel. They really care about their problems, about their needs, about their wants. And this in luxury, that has to be, you know, like a five star service level anyway. So don't, you know, ignore that kind of human aspect in your rich media and other forms, except from audio are like videos, obviously. Um, things like, you know, like just the typical image video of your hotel, of your luxury villa, of your yachting uh, fleet, uh, of your jets, uh, then maybe, you know, like in, into terms of employer branding or corporate branding where you're showing the people who work there that really care about your business. And I would recommend to keep it uh, in terms of like the human aspect down to earth and real and kind of authentic versus opting in for a super corporate polished public relations speak kind of like style because people are getting a little bit tired of that kind of like type of communication and uh, they want you know something that is obviously polite professional and uh, polished but they don't want something that sounds like somebody's reading a really badly written script of a prompter right and then there's different forms of video right except for image videos uh, corporate branding videos you could have product videos of your suite. You can have 360 animations where you like, you know, where you can maybe like walk in your online browser through the room or for the villa. And there's a lot of great things that are uh, available out there. Uh, you know, you can have uh, things on your site that are gamified, there are interactive elements that change when you click on them. And there's a lot of cool things you can do with Rich Media, um, especially now that we're entering the age of augmented reality mobile apps, uh, that the online experience is seamless across different multiple devices. Uh, I could talk hours about this and this is something we, we try to stay on top of at Jade Wolf, uh, no, matter the, no matter what, because we know that like the rich media consumption, more video, more audio, more gamified elements, more interactive elements, more mini sites will become more and more important in the future. And that is definitely something that travel brands shouldn't, ig shouldn't ignore because it's a great opportunity. If you can suck people more into you in this world of luxury travel that you represent, uh, rich media is one of the greatest ways to do it, right? It might be, seem expensive in the beginning. And for some people, oh, it's a, like, it's a cost factor. It's a sunken cost. It's like brand marketing, okay? 
you know, no, we need to like have beautiful things and it costs much money and it doesn't lead to any deals. It's not trackable. Well, if you don't track it and you don't do it as a part of a funnel, obviously you will never know if it, if it converts well and if and it gets, uh, improves your bottom line, right? But that's another topic. Um, so yeah, that's rich media. Uh, I, I mentioned a little bit landing pages. Landing pages are a really important part in our funnels. You know, when we build out marketing funnels to start with strategy, buyer personas, and you know, we then select the media mix and buy some media, be it niche, mainstream, search, social, uh, whatever it might be. And then, you know, we drive traffic to our funnel. Then obviously we want to have that traffic land on a landing page, which should have like sales letter, luxury copy, which should have rich media on it, which should have the booking form integrated for the client, for the customer, or should have some kind of lead form, some kind of mechanism to capture the contact information and feed it into the CRM of our client onto their database so they can follow up on it, right? If they're salespeople and close the deal. And, and then there's a lot of things that go into a great landing page. We have uh, people, you know, landing page designers that we work with that are great at, you know, like squeezing out uh, all the conversions and making sure that there's enough white space. There's the, not too many buttons, not like uh, uh, important call to action, not too many call to actions, not too many distractions. There's a lot of things that go into the conception of a great landing page from the mock-up to the final version. Uh, and you know, like lots of companies have this attitude that, oh, you know, like we just drive the traffic to our main page or we drive it, you know, to a simple product page, which is one picture and like a bullet point, five bullet points about the technical features and that's enough. Well, if you're still thinking that, then I know that you not understand what marketing, digital marketing in modern time is all about and you're not leveraging the potential that is out there for you, right? And there's really no excuse for that. It's just ignorance at that point. Um, yeah, so this also like goes into the next one. So it's like, why do you need content marketing? Well, I think by now it should be clear why do you need it? Um, it's just to communicate with people you, you never have met before. If somebody comes to your website, to your online presence, to your landing page, even to your social media channels or to your email marketing to a certain degree, because content marketing, guess what? Plays into those areas as well. Um, and it's the way that's the touch point with your brand, like who you are, what do you want to communicate? Do you want to like have a certain path for people? You know, do you have put some effort and thinking into like, how does your content fit, you know, like into the path that you want your customers to take? Where do you want them to end up? Do you want them just like to watch a bunch of beautiful pictures and then just leave because, okay, it's beautiful pictures, but I didn't got the information that I want. Do you want, you know, or do you want to provide them with pictures, information, copy, storytelling, suck them into your world, give them easy options to leave their contact information behind, to book directly with you, to get to know the human aspect of your, of your brand, uh, you know, all those things. Uh, if yes, if the answer is yes, then you need good content marketing and you need to have content marketing as an integral part of your funnel and your funnel needs to be an integral part of your overall business and digital marketing strategy right in our modern times if you don't doing that then yeah you you will have a problem if not now then in a couple of years a lot of businesses are very arrogant uh in i, I experience it when i when we do prospecting when we do outbound sales at jake wolf i talk to a lot of people all the times and when they say that they're not interested in what we do and i ask them like okay may i ask why you know oh we already have digital marketing and we have uh, all those things and I ask, okay, so like I'm just out of curiosity, what do you have? And then usually it boils down to we have like a website that is probably like a couple of years old, bunch of nice images and maybe we're doing a little bit SEO and a little bit of search marketing and we post here and there on social media. We maybe have somewhere a small newsletter box in the corner and that for people is digital marketing, right? And that's terrible. That's terrible, right? They, they don't understand that, you know, Real digital marketing is an art form and you know you can use it for growth, you can use it for spreading awareness, you can use it for brand or direct marketing approach, you can use it for so many things. And the investment is nearly always worth the cost in the long term because we're talking about, you know, like investing in the future of your company right now because that's what it is. Digital marketing is the future of business. There's no way about it. Like business will always be done in person and at trade shows and over the phone and you know like that, that's that's an integral component but the facilitation of that business will be digital and people need to understand that 
So um, I talked about also like where it fits in terms of a funnel, right? Um, and one aspect, you know, when you're creating content marketing for your funnel, for your digital marketing strategy, for your homepage, is uh, for your social media or whatever you use it for, is like I mentioned earlier, context, right? Context is queen. What does it mean if, if for luxury travel in particular? Well, for example, if you're moving away from what I would call the mainstream markets, which is like Central Europe, um, the UK, North America, United States, Canada, um, and you know maybe Scandinavia as well, and you're moving a little bit more towards exotic, more exotic markets like Latin America or the Middle East or Eastern Europe, Russia, uh, then Asia, obviously Southeast Asia, East Asia, particularly China, South Korea maybe, right? When you're talking about those markets, it's not just about translation or localization. It's not just like that when a native speaker will read your content, it will think, okay, this, they invested into like making this sound like, like somebody, you know, from my country would have written it. It's also about, you know, like the intercultural component. Right. Certainly in China, for example, red is a color that is associated a lot with luck and fortune and a lot of parts in weddings and in, you know, like little envelopes, fu baos, they're called, you know, for birthdays and celebrations are giving up with money. So red is a really good color for them. Right. Uh, but white, really bad, associated with, uh, with ghosts and uh, funerals and uh, death and all kinds of bad things. Same goes for certain numbers. Certain numbers uh, to, uh, represent longevity or fortune, while other numbers represent death and bad luck. And, and, and this that kind of like feng shui aspect of, of Chinese culture, you can find it in other Asian cultures as well. And then if we're talking about the Middle East, obviously there are some things in Islam which, uh, you know, you, you should avoid, you know, in, in your content if you don't want to insult people that come from those regions and you want to like actually them to you know, uh, respect your business and feel appreciated because people will always appreciate it if you respect their culture, if you try, you know, like to speak their language and engage with them on an, on an eye level and not from a top down level, right? Or we're a French brand, uh, we are French, we will have French uh, writing and maybe English on our side and we will deal with everything in a French way, but we would like to have more Chinese customers or we would like to have more Middle Eastern customers. And then you're not willing even, you know, to have proper localization and maybe remove a couple elements or re re reconfigure parts of your website for, for those particular customers. Are you serious? You know, this, this is always what I think. Um, or people will speak of something that I have discovered is like, which, which companies do, which is really hilarious and just shows me that um, they don't really understand what they're doing is the, when they have like multiple translations and then one of the translations is Chinese and I click on it and I think like, oh, cool, they have a Chinese translation. But then I see they have uh, Google technology, they have Western social media technology on the website. And I'm thinking, OK, so they're probably trying to reach Taiwanese people or people from Hong Kong and Macau or Singapore because mainland Chinese people won't be able to load your site if you have technology from Google or Western social media on your website. Right. If, if you have any of that kind of code on your website, the, the, the firewall there will just block you. So Chinese people will never be able to even see your site in the first place. So people don't realize those kind of things and what kind of, uh, you know, uh, the intercultural bridge that they need to like uh, overcome to be effectively selling to those people and get that business. And everybody wants that business. And the pe brands who do well are the ones, you know, who work with companies like Jake Wolf and get some uh, consultation on like the intercultural component and what kind of technology and what kind of marketing is available there, right? And lots of people are just ignorant and just trying to like wing, wing it, so to speak, you know, have simple translations and they think, okay, that's, that's what's gonna cut it in the long term if we wanna do that uh, kind of international business. No, it won't. You have to like be serious about that stuff. Yeah, which brings me to like the, the, the final thought of this episode, like um, content marketing is important, good enough, which you always hear uh, from businesses and marketing managers when it comes to your marketing strategy, or your content strategy is just plain and simply bad. OK, good enough is not good. You know, just having a website is not enough. Just having simple translations is not enough. Uh, yes, you might be getting some leads. Yes, you might be getting some business from your website. You know, um, 
but is it optimized? Are you getting the maximum value out of it? Is it a growth machine for you? Do you have a real funnel in place? Are you measuring it? You know, is your content everything it could be? And then if I ask those questions, lots of times I will hear like, oh, you know, David, like, but we're like a small business or we're, you know, like having other priorities. We're focusing on the trade shows or we're focusing, you know, on uh, getting more salespeople right now or we're focusing on implementing a new uh, office technology or something like that. There is always, the time is never right. There's always something uh, that keeps people from exp uh, exploring the real potential of their digital strategy. And that is exactly the reason why businesses stay small in the long term, right? You can grow with outbound sales. You can. You can grow by hiring more salespeople. You can also grow by focusing, you know, on word of mouth or all those things that are have been working since the beginning of business and, you know, in luxury particularly, like, are really popular. But is that future-proof? Are you really thinking about the future of your business? Or are you just in business, uh, for, you want to do just business for three, four years, make a little bit of money, and then maybe, like, you know, um, disintegrate your company, sell it off or something and don't care about it anymore. If that's the case, sure, just do the bare minimum, Pareto principle, right? Put the bare minimum into your digital strategy, put a, build a really basic funnel, don't even measure it, and just, you know, focus your efforts somewhere else. But if you're that type of business, my prophecy is that you won't prevail, you won't last, and in bunch, a couple of years, maybe like two, three years from now, you won't be even able to grow anymore because the world is changing rapidly. And good enough, like I said, is just plain and simply bad nowadays. If you want to do real digital marketing, you just cannot be good enough. You have to be excellent. Excellent is the word. Okay, that is today's uh, episode on content. This, uh, like, um, If you like this episode, if you like this podcast, obviously subscribe, no matter where you listen to it, uh, be it on Spotify, we're on iTunes. Google, uh, Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and uh, TuneIn, uh, which I think are the major platforms nowadays for podcasting. Um, we have a newsletter on our website that you can subscribe to, where we send those episodes out once a month, and we send a bunch of articles, book recommendations, software recommendations, a bunch of cool things. Uh, you can follow us on social media. We are uh, on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, yeah, and... We also offer, like I mentioned in earlier episodes, uh, a paid discovery if you're a business that wants excellence for their digital marketing funnel. If you want to be like, you know, somebody who uh, explores 100% of their potential, uh, then we offer that paid discovery service, which is like $500 for a session with us where we look at your website, look at your social media, look at your email marketing, look at your content marketing, and we recommend certain things. And, you know, we kind of like, show you where there's potential and then you know uh, if doing a strategy project and building a new funnel or improving your existing funnel makes any sense right and in 90 percent 99 percent of cases it does make sense because as i said people have that good enough mentality nowadays which is just not which is not that great and if you end up becoming your client um, we roll the 500 dollars you pay for the paid discovery over into the strategy project so you don't even actually pay for it, right? It's just a mechanism for us to weed out the people who are not serious. Um, and, you know, we recently even had a person who uh, filled out our paid discovery form and uh, it ended up like that the person just wrote us then afterwards, oh, like I didn't realize that this is paid or this, this costs money. Like, don't be that person. <laughs> read the site. Go to jadewolfmarketing.com slash discovery. Read, read what is included. Read what the process is like before you fill out a booking form. Familiarize yourself with our services on jadewolfmarketing.com and make sure that you know what you're getting into. Don't be just somebody who wastes other people's time. Um, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it for this week. Next episode is going to be about email marketing and follow-up tactics that you can use, uh, you know, sales follow-up, things you can do with your CRM and your email marketing. And that's going to be your next, uh, the next step in, you know, our uh, series on funnels. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll talk to you next week.